Hello, welcome to a new video. In this occasion, I'm going to be presenting the Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon from the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. This is a 3D model that is based off different Cyber Dragon cards. The most famous of, all, of them all is this one, Cyber Dragon, from the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX series. But in modern times, they did this uh, version, which is a mix of different Cyber Dragon heads. Cyber Dragon Dre, Cyber Dragon Zwei, this other head right here which is the cyber dragon original monster but anyways this is created entirely in blender as you can see right here and this was also rigged using the rigify different rig types in this case to create such amazing 3d model every month i create a very challenging 3d model in blender to be stylized with 2d tune shaders if you want to learn how to create 2D Tune Shaders in Blender, please check out in the video description the links that I'm going to be sharing with you because I created a course especially to guide you step by step on how this process is done here in Blender. And since we're going into Blender 4.0 in the next month, I'm going to be upgrading that course with the new functions in Blender, so stay tuned. Anyways, this is the model the 3d model as you can see right here it's it's pretty amazing i mean it's it's totally 2d which i really like and this was a challenging part because uh this model had some um electric glows if we can say it that way this this took me a lot of time to figure out almost two months in regular time but if we were counting the official time that i dedicated to this it was only on weekends so therefore it's just about one to two weeks to um, start this from zero to finish. I don't want to make this video too long, so let's get into this. So there are three types in this um, model, which I want to share with you. The first one was to create a spine, a spine type. Let me see if I can select it all. Uh, you can see the controls here, and this come natively in Rigify. So if you create a, a type spine, then you're going to get this thing. Next, I created two separate bones, which I attached to the spine, uh, parenting them into the main spine that I have right here. And these bones were to control the shoulders. As you can see right here, I'm going to be, whoops, those are the wings, sorry. These are the shoulders. You can see the, the iconic shape right there for the shoulders. Of course, this is a robot. It's not meant to, you know, really move the shoulders. But I thought it was interesting to, to rig them so that you can manipulate them. This is just fantastic. I mean, look at that. By the way, the card does not show you the back of this um, this model. So there's no way to know what is, what's in the back. Uh, so I have to figure it out and get creative license for that. So the first type was a... Um, let me see if I can show you right here with the annotations. Here we go. So the first type was a spine. I'm going to be drawing all over the place, so bear with me. So the first type was a spine, okay? So that was um, a generic thing. But the next interesting part that I uh, did was to experiment with a tentacle rig type. So for a tentacle, let me just use a purple color or something like that. So this head has all tentacles on it. It's just a single, simple tentacle rig type. And again, this was... Um, this is a child of this shoulder. On the other side, I created the tail because as you can see, this is not a, uh, what's it called? A head. This is going to be a tail. This is the Cyber Dragon Dre tail. If you look at the original artwork, you can see that this card is the continuation of this head down here so I'm going to just highlight it for you so it's just like that you can see it right here this is where Dre's head is you know comes from the tail and then this part over here it is a chimera tech dragon so don't don't try to make logic sense out of this I mean it's just a card um, anyways so that was a tail okay this is a, a rig type tail which again is child of this um, shoulder rig Okay, this is a child of this shoulder rig, and in turn, this shoulder is a child of the uh, top controller of the spine. 
So that figures it out for the next step. Um, I created another tail. Let me just open a new note here. And if you have any questions for this kind of setup, please let me know in the comment sections below. This is why I'm doing this so that you can have a reference on what it is possible to do here in Blender. I'm not going to show you all the intrinsic details because I don't know if you are going to get bored and if this video is going to get low views. And lately, um, YouTube is being very shady with my channel. I don't know why. Uh, but anyways, I'm just enjoying what I do and this is why I share it with you. So, this is a tail. So, all of these controllers have uh, these little balls that you see right here. And those are offsets um, to, like, kind of bulk the tail. So, you can scale these things, these controllers, and the tail will bulk. Okay? So, not only it rotates in a certain direction, it will also bulk. Now, I'm just explaining the theory. I'm going to show you in a little bit how this moves. Anyways, let's continue. And last but not least, the last part right here, this, um, this section of the dragon, it's a another tentacle. So we have a tail connecting a tentacle. And this tentacle is a child of the tail. Okay? And in turn, this tail is a child of the spine. And just like that, we're going to get this shape. Oops, sorry. Alt R, Alt S, Alt G, which are right here. And from there, you can see that our 3D model is in a T pose. Now, figuring out which was going to be the correct T pose was very hard. Because right here, you already see it solved. But at the moment when I was creating this, it was like, where's the head? Where's the shoulder? Where's, what is this? Is this a chest? Is this the back section? What does the back section look like? So by, by basing my uh, educated assumptions on different cards, I can see that this um, card, this character, has different uh, parts from the different um, Cyber Dragon heads all around him. Alright, so this is how it looks. I know it might look weird, but it, it's great. I mean, you can totally animate this, and it's uh, got some pretty nice controls. As I mentioned before, let's get this uh, into post mode. For example, I'm going to get uh, to the base. Um, I can rotate this tail, but there is a specifically designed control down here, which you can see, that does an IK roll for the entire tail so that way you can go like this and uh, move it somehow and twist it like that um, let me see if I can just put this over here and yes this is basically how you get this cyber dragon uh, sorry chimeratic rampage dragon to be posed you can pose it however you want. The, the heads have their uh, jaws, and this um, you can, this control right here for all of the cyber dragons. You know, move the jaw and do that. Posing for whatever you want. If you really want to, you know, take the original position, then you can turn, and then you're going to get a quaternion rotation and all of this character so if you put the head down but then you want the neck up then you're gonna have to come into this section of the neck roll it and from there you can pose it it's as easy as that let me just uh, move it over here probably like that just like we were watching on the on the original card artwork and yeah, I don't want to bore you with details. You can ask in the comment section below how you can do certain sections from the spine, from the tail, and from the tentacle. But the cool thing about this is that uh, it's got a reflective, fake reflective shader. So the challenge in this one was to create that reflective shader so that it will not depend on the environment itself, but it can, you know, just be... Um, uh, showing you a nice reflective metal stylized color and where is that you can see right here 
let me show you this one right here right now it's not with sub, sub uh, subdivision modifier but if I move this you can see that this moves along now you may argue that you can create um, a similar shader using matcaps and yes indeed that's another way to create uh, stylized metallic shaders and it's a really nice way actually to create that kind of stuff but the challenge with this one specifically was as a, a an experiment because in future iterations for other characters we now know how to handle this kind of uh, glossy things on different surfaces and it's all got to do with how we UV or how we UV unwrap the characters and that's a nice amazing thing that we can do because from here on we can seriously stylize metallic surfaces not only like uh, modern times but we can also create this like the retro animes from the 90s and also if you are wondering if it is able to receive lights you already know the answer I don't work with real lights but I gave you the choice to do that just by switching this little uh, connection right here so as you can see it is connected to an emission shader directly into this mix shader before the material output but I created a diffuse BSDF and you can plug that in and now every light that is on the scene it's going to affect this model let me show you so you can move this over here and move this over here and it will affect it and it will retain the textures but it will be affected by the light so look at that softer shading if you like this kind of things it is there for you to you know create your poses and probably animation if you would like I'll try to animate this guy later on in the weeks but for now this is all I wanted to show you and I hope you really like this video thank you very much for watching please subscribe to my channel it's been a pleasure talking with you so let me know what you think about this model in the comment section below or if you have any questions about how rigify types work, please check out the video description. My name is Pierre Schiller, I am a 3D animator and VFX compositor with over 20 years of experience. And let me ask you something, have you tried Blender? Try Blender, Blender is powerful and beyond artistry compatible.